Hello everyone and welcome to this Wednesday's webinar and it's all about debugging your own skins. My name's Martin and I'm going to be joined today by... Hi there, I'm Karen and <clears throat> I'll be helping out uh, for the Q&A which we will have throughout the webinar. Uh, if you have a question, please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen and uh, make sure your questions are relevant to what we're talking about. That helps everything move along faster. And uh, that's it for me. Have a great uh, session and I'll see you later. Thank you, Karen. Right, hi everyone. Right, okay, so today's uh, topic then is debugging. Right, so I'm gonna start off with um, how do you approach this task? Now I've got a project open. I'm going to open up the skin. Now this skin is um, just full of errors. We've just you know made sure that you can see everything, and and we're just going to talk you through some of the bits you're going to see. So in version seven, because that's what we've got. That's the current build. Um, when something's wrong in the skin's tree, you'll see a little yellow warning, and we've got some other little you know. Uh, context menus that will help as well so the yellow warnings what are these all about well when something goes wrong um, where the skin is expecting to see either a variable or an action or something like that and it doesn't it throws up a warning and if you mouse over it you get a tool tip to say this element contains actions with invalid target elements for example so when I click on it we can then go straight to the actions look down and we'll see a warning there Okay, so you can see you've got a warning next to this action. Okay, now it says it's an invalid action, so therefore, or, or, or an invalid target, so this does not exist. Okay, so that's that's one of the um, uh, ways that you can detect uh, problems. Um, what we've also got is right button click. So if you right button click, we can um, find element usage. Um, so we can click on that and it just says that's here it is it's a, a it's it's the close button it's an SVG graphic and yeah it doesn't do anything else other than it's there um, with the uh, this dialog box that comes up the search you can actually click and find it up here it's called the find button and you click it and because we've got the um, SVG button selected it's actually going to show uh, this button and it's going to say an exact match for the ID. Now, if I was to deselect that and just and just click anywhere in the uh, let's come off this anywhere in the canvas, so nothing selected, and we click the find button, you'll see that it's blank. Um, we're not going to search anything, so I can now type something in. So, um, yep. So that's the context menu there. Right button click. Um, we can uh, do other things in here, like revealing canvas. So it shows it here. Um, other little tips as well um, for you know preparing yourself to debug your skin um, would be if you've got anything off canvas. Um, like here, I've got a couple of rectangles off canvas. I can't see them. So it may be helpful if you go to view, we have this selection here to show off canvas elements. So when we select that, the canvas expands to see these elements. You see that we've got a yellow line all the way around the the skin so this is the visible skin or, or the skin size that you've set up but these are the elements off 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 canvas because these could be on a button click you're gonna slide them in and slide them out but obviously if you're trying to find them and you can't chances are they're off canvas and so clicking that option allows you to see other things also when you're debugging try and make your life as easy as possible as you can see this skin skin is quite busy um, as an example if I've got something wrong with my thumbnail menu and I'm, I'm going to try and debug that what I can do is just you know I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut for everything here we go I'm going to click the top revealing tree I'm going to hide it all and then what I can do is just select um, all the elements to do uh, or, or, or for, for the menu select that and now I'm only seeing in the skin canvas the elements that I want to work with all right so that's just a, that's another little uh, simple thing to yep yeah, hide and show everything right okay so what else can we do um, so we've pointed out pointed out warnings we've hovered over them to see the tool tips um, We've seen the skins or, 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 or the, the tools at our disposal, but how do we can, uh, we can also get to them, not only through right button click, but if we go to the edit menu, 
you'll see that we can click the find and find warnings. Now find warnings, what's that all about? Well, if you've got, if you've built a skin, uh, let's just, let's just add everything back again, uh, like that. So if you've built a skin, um, and uh, let's just move that. If you close it, and it's got one said the current skin contains warnings. Do you do you want to review them? Yes or no. If you click no and save it, right? If you now open the skin up and close it again, you don't get that dialog box. So how do you find your warnings? Well, it's through that edit menu. So you go edit, find warnings, and this brings up the same box as what it would have done with an unsaved skin. As you try to save the skin, it throws up these warnings, um, or it throws up this box to show you the warnings before you try and save it. Now, on support, when people send in their skins, we do actually see an awful lot with these yellow triangles, with these warnings everywhere. Um, and it's, it's always worth trying to find out what's causing these before you sort of go any further with like asking for help and things like that. I mean, if obviously if you've got a, a yellow warning and you don't know why it's there and you can't find out why it's there, but some of these are, you know, are pretty, you know, um, uh, self-explanatory. This element contains logic blocks with an invalid variable. So we're clicking on this and you can see here, we've got a yellow warning next to the alpha logic block. When I click that, viz timer, well, the viz timer it's saying there there is no variable this is an invalid variable viz timer okay so this is why this is broke all right as i say this is just a skin that we've just thrown together with with well you know with lots of errors to show you some of the stuff that we're doing um okay someone's just saying that we've got no sound can we confirm that people can hear us or not anybody else can hear us uh, I can hear you. Right, I've just seen it sh throw up on the Q&A. Yeah, if you guys can... Uh... Sound is fine. Okay, right. So. Okay. So, Thank you, everyone. Yes. And it's... You. Uh, sorry, Raphael. Maybe uh, we did have a little bit of sound problems coming into Zoom. I, I'm going to blame Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe just give a check on that. Okay. Right. Okay, yep. right. Okay, so carrying on then. So yeah, so basically this project is to highlight all, the, you know, highlight the tools that you're going to be using to find um, uh, uh, issues. Right. So if we, uh, so as as another one which is really good, is as you know, as Pano Two VR has evolved, we used to use a lot of actions to hide and show things, and then we moved over to variables, and variables are really good as well to hide and show things. Um, but you know, variables can be used to hide and show a lot of things. So if you've got something that's not working on a button click, what you can do is you can go to the variable table, right button click and find usage. And then what will happen is, um, so this is the opt loader. So uh, optional, actually what I'm gonna do is, this is quite a good one. I'm gonna go to opt uh, find usage and this is the optional hotspot preview. So this is a variable that in the skin, um, if you give this skin to somebody, they can click on the skin configuration and then select from the configuration, do they wanna see you know, the pop-up um, preview image on your point hotspot, yes or no? And then you can set it that way. But you may want to, uh, you know, so if, if we right button click here, we can see its usage. So we can see this is the, the variable itself it's talking about, there it is. And here we can see this is a, uh, a, a tooltip uh, that has actually got a logic block visible. So you can see here it's got a visible logic block and it's within here. Yeah. So you can see where this variable is being used. And here we've got the preview image. And again, this is, you know, is the opt preview. So this would be turning the preview on and off. Okay. One of the other things um, we you can use whilst, you know, um, finding faults um, which I'm probably famous for by now is adding my little helper text boxes so again if we add a, um, a uh, text box into the skin I'm gonna put it there I'm gonna anchor it um, top left and let's do it 10 by 10 and what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna get this text box if we use the insert placeholder button on variables it's going to be the hotspot preview. So this is going to show us the state of that um, variable. So if it's not working, 
is it because it's not working or is it because um well, let's let's uh guess that. i'm gonna save the skin and i'm gonna I'm, I'm using a keyboard shortcut so i'm on the mac command it would be control on the pc but command s is going to save the skin and then i'm going to use option command g to generate the output again it would be con um, control alt g um oh sorry there we go to generate the output are we going to generate the output yes we are here it is so here we can see the uh the helper text box there and it's set to true and it's set to true because we've got the hotspot preview selected if i was to deselect it click ok you'll see that it's now set to false so if you had a problem with the hotspot previews not showing this would at least show you that that selection's working the variable is actually getting changed so what you'd need to do is then track what else that variable um, would affect now back in the skin as we said if we were to go to um, find usage one of the things would be the hotspot preview the actual box itself that showed the the actual preview so we could actually trace it right back to here it is and is it actually saying the right value yes or no so that's a, a good way to trace a, a, a fault right back from output to back to the skin and nailing it down to an individual element okay um that's uh quite a bit on that and had an another um tip really for the process of fault finding is sometimes you can have elements in the skin that are affecting other elements which you wouldn't have thought would have done it so this is a a bit extreme but if you're really getting to a stage where you really can't find a fault then what you would probably do or what would be a good idea to do would be to you can go into the output folder um let's uh, go to errors what you could do is duplicate the skin all right and then you could physically start deleting elements of the skin that are not needed so for argument's sake i mean we, we're actually hiding elements that we that you know to, to to tidy up the skin but you could actually start deleting elements and just leaving the problem area and if you do that and find that all of a sudden it's working then that gives you a bit more of a clue that that something else is causing the issue um, now one of the test skins we've got coming up will actually do this so um, so that's basically preparing yourself to you know fault find within a skin so with that said I need to grab a quick slurp of a drink so Karen can I quickly ask do we have any questions um, no there are no questions but um, maybe if someone is quickly typing we can see Ugh. but I think it was pretty straightforward <laughs> I, one thing to know is, I don't know about any of you who've been on these webinars, uh, but um, I'm always using Martin's helper uh, text boxes <laughs> in almost every skin I, I do. Um, I've got a helper box and uh, that's probably, I think if, if, if you don't remember one thing from this webinar today, I think those helper boxes are the, are, are key. All right. Cool. Still no questions. So, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll carry on. I've, I've, had, I've had a slurp of my tea, so I'm, I'm good to go um, for another half hour. <laughs> right, okay. So that was this project then. So this project was primarily to show how to get to and find errors. So the, the, the actual take from this is hover over a warning and it'll tell you this particular one, uh, this element contains actions with invalid, uh, with, uh, with invalid targets. This uh, uh, element contains logic blocks with invalid variables. So we've got two issues with this. So here we can see a, 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 a warning next to a uh, logic block and we cursor down and we've got the warning here. In actual fact, web page, what would be cool? So let's, before I actually move on to a different project, if we click find, so let's deselect everything click find and let's type in um because on the search box i mean as i was saying um perhaps i didn't say with the search box you've got other options where you can go so we can look for um errors or or not errors but look for elements or ids or text within 
certain uh, uh, specific areas so we've got everywhere or we could just look for IDs um, if we do um, a uh, right button click and find usage here you can see that it automatically is selecting an element because this is an element and we're looking for this okay all right but if I don't want to be influenced by anything I can click the find everywhere and then um, what was that going to be a uh, web uh, underscore page right so that target was looking for web page but if you look here we've actually found web page underscore so the reason why it can't find it is because it's got an extra underscore so you could just pop in there double click delete the underscore and as they would say around these parts jobs are good there you go so that that would now would work okay so yeah if we go back to the URL and find element usage you'll see that um, yeah we're not going to see the errors that we had before the error in this in the actions is now gone because we corrected that right okay so that's uh, another way. but of course the other thing you've got here is exact match um, so if I do, if I deselect exact match and you've got HT URL it brings in HT URL image and all the other things so it, you can you know use exact match to nail down the exact element that you want but if you're not quite sure deselect exact match and it gives you more options that you can probably recognize and each one of these gives you an idea of what's going on right okay now as I say this project was primarily built to to show you around and and give you a, a you know a, a good grounding on how to start off so I'm not going to save this and I'm going to discard all right and what I'm going to do now is don't save let's open up a proper project that had issues now this actually came in through support now to uh, you know save face for everybody what we did was take the error and completely rebuild a new project so hopefully no one's going to recognize anything but we're going to open it up and what this error is is too many is in there um sound sounds not playing now a little bit of background story with this the sound wasn't playing with certain um, browsers it was with others wasn't with with, with some um, and so the call came into support or the email come into support or uh, and without seeing the skin without seeing anything the suggestion was we'll make sure that the loop is set to minus one and then you can trigger the sound to play with a button and that will get you around all of the browser issues the customer couldn't solve the issue and sent in the skin when the sim was, the skin was sent in it revealed everything this is why it's a great thing is if you've got an issue um you know to send in the support package the support package if you don't know where it is can be found here we can go click so help uh, create support package and when you create a support package you can it by default it gives us a screenshot um, it gives us a couple of files which tell us um, you know what operating system you've got so if it's a Mac or Windows and things like that so we can you know obviously go to the correct OS to try and reproduce um, here it just uh, sends um, the skin file and the project file um, but it could be that we say to you right well let's have everything so you'll select this create a package it'll be fairly big use a file transfer or something but we get to see your project as I say with this uh, because of sound you could you know start the sound with a volume up or down so volume zero and then volume up that would be a sound button as an example or you could play press uh, press play and stop or play and pause that would be another button so different ways of doing it but in this case that is exactly what happened so if we select the sound um, uh, uh, the the actual uh, sound element or, or, or the element in the viewer you'll see that it was set to minus one with our instruction um, and what I'm going to do also here is you probably won't be able to hear this but when I click this I hear the sound on the recording on the playback you will hear it but I do hear the sound but here I, I, I want to explain this there, there's a gotcha here as well um, we've seen on support mp3 files come in and they just don't work um, you know they've, they've, they've been created with you know uh, some third-party piece of software and yeah they just don't work they're not encoded correctly 
Um, I personally use a, a piece of software called Audacity. I mean, there are other software out there that does work, but I know Audacity and I know it's uh, you know bomb proof for me and it works. Um, so I tend to run things through there, but be aware you could actually have a sound that plays here and not in the browser and vice versa. You could have a sound that doesn't play here but you do get a squeak or something when it's being played in the browser. So, you know, best thing to do is what you're actually after is a sound that can be played here and drop it into the browser. Does it play in the browser as well? So, yeah, um, so that's a, that's that's the first one. Does the sound you're dealing with actually work? So here we've got the sound. We've got the level set to one. So it's full volume and loop minus one. So it doesn't auto play. Right. So. We went to the skin and here is the uh, the skin. This is the custom skin. So as as always, let's get rid of all the things that we don't want to see. So hot spots and buttons and rotate and zoom. No need to see any of that. And I can even get rid of the full screen button. So all I want to concentrate on is this play button. So we open it up and we can see that we've got some buttons here. So we click on the button, cursor down and let's just see what the action is. And the action is actually mouse click set volume. So this project actually set out with the volume uh, or, or with the the MP3 auto starting, auto playing. And what was happening is that these buttons actually set the volume to 100% or on click, it would set it down to zero. So this was turning off the volume, but it was turned off the volume of the main sound channel, right? So this was this is how the project started out. But as you're probably aware or not aware, so I'll enlighten you, is that some browsers will not allow auto start of media with audio. So if you've got a video for argument's sake and it's got no sound, it will auto play. You've got a video with sound and it won't. You're going to need a button click or some interaction to give it a kick to start it working. OK. All right. So I'm thinking here, well, this was the problem. The problem was the project opened, no sound um, and but it still wouldn't play because the browser, you know, the, the browser security killed the auto play. Right. Boom. So of course, we didn't know that on support. We suggested start it with, you know, uh, minus ones. So there's no sound. Then use buttons to start and stop it. So what you would do here then is go to media. Um, this one was what to set it to mute. Right. So instead of mute, what I'm going to do is set that to pause it. And it's going to be element 01 because that's the sound button or, or, or the sound element in the uh, viewer or media editor uh, editor right so we're going to go to this one uh, this action and we're going to set this now to media um, uh, this was play and I'll loop it so it plays on a loop and again we're going to target the element 01 so technically now this should solve our problem so let's save the skin and generate an output do you want to do that yes I do so now let's think about it. We've got the um, sound added, full volume, loop is minus one so it doesn't auto start. We've now got the button set that when we click on this, it should auto start and it didn't. I don't know if you saw it, but there was a brief flash of the uh, icon here. As I say, with, the, with this recording, you're probably not going to hear the audio. Um, on, on the live webinar but you will on the recording but in in safari when sound is playing you've got a little blue i uh, a blue speaker icon here so that's not lit so i can tell you that it's not working i'm clicking this i've still got no sound right how do i diagnose this then why is this not working okay now my thoughts on this one were i say my thoughts i'll actually say our thoughts on this one because <laughs> i had help um was that well the main sound channel they were using the main sound channel so what we did was click find and we just typed in so making sure exact match was deselected and everywhere which is the default if you just click find with nothing and we went underscore and started to type in the word main and when we did that you get this pop up and it, what it's saying is if I click on this it highlights the element that's got an action start set volume if I double click this, it hides the box. And when we scroll down, there was the issue. On start, set volume to nothing for the main sound channel. So even though we were actually starting the sound and stopping the sound, and in the 
in the properties of the sound it was set to full volume as soon as you open the project this action sent the set the volume down to zero this was because when the project first started out it had sound it was auto start full volume the buttons to start and stop it were just changing the volume of the main sound channel to 100% or 0% but because they didn't want the sound to start straight away they put this action in and of course without without sort of you know going through every single you know element in the skin's tree to find an action this would have been very you know especially if it had been a big well it was actually a quite a big skin but we've just taken bits out of it but you know so finding it could have been a bit of a chore but just using that find action and just th thinking back and logically thinking well initially it was using the main sound channel we tapped we typed in to find main and there we go we actually found the issue so if we now delete that action it's no longer needed i'm going to save the skin generate a new output boom and when we go back into it i can click the sound button we've now got i'm now hearing lots of music in the in my headphones and we can turn that on and off and that was the issue right so there was that process of founding or finding the issue with this particular customer's project okay right um Karen, before I move on to the next project, I've, I've, I've only got a couple more or a few more, but is there anything that, you know, any questions? No, no questions. Not yet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, good. Right. Okay. And I have no, I have nothing else to add. <laughs> no. Please talk for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to lubricate. I, right. I actually have a question. I, I do have a question. Go on. But, um, maybe uh, when you're using find, um, you looked up underscore main. If you just used main, would you get the same um, uh, results? And another question is if, right, so your search was, was underscore main. What happens if you just use main? Right, okay, well, for that to happen, what I've got to do is put the action back in. So let's just do okay. um, start uh volume 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 uh set volume zero main right okay so what we do then is have a look so we're going to look everywhere main yeah okay yeah Boom. so it really it, you don't really need to um, no it's, it's just that I, exactly that's right it's just that you know with We've seen the target was underscore main. I remember that being it, and I remember you know the 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 the, the buttons doing that. But yeah, that was just so that's the only reason why I put it in there. But even simpler still, you just yeah. But with exact match. And what about volume, for instance? Because we know that this was using the action set volume, and maybe that maybe that uh, comes to somebody's mind first to look for. No, um, I don't think volume is going to okay. work. It, yeah, it's it's. Just, it, it it targets um uh let me let me let me let me let me see what the find the um edit hang on let's uh find element usage right now this is what i was after if you look at the things where we can look it's ids elements right variables and action targets so 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 we can look for underscore main and main but we can't look for the action of volume yeah so perhaps there's a little hint there for the eyes that are watching this <laughs> yeah that's what i was that's yeah. what i was hinting at <laughs> <Perhaps> <laughs> that... but i was more hinting more like yeah. you know there's other there are certain things that the find or the search will will search for and yeah. not everything so yeah yeah but i mean it's uh but having said that i mean because nowadays everybody's using variables or or, or you know because they're global and it's the sort of much easier to work with, I think. I mean, obviously you can right button click in the variable table, find its usage and it lists everything. But you know, that's 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 a good call. That's a good call if you're watching this and you have influence over how it works. <laughs> Say no more, I like my job. Um, yeah, good. Right, so that was how we found that then in this particular project. Okay, so we've got another little project for you. Um, image pop-up now this was a doozy it's actually not very difficult if you understand and know pano 2 vr very well but if you don't and you're new to it this was 
Yeah, a good one. So this is why I wanted to highlight this. Okay, this project, it uses um, point hotspots to navigate between two nodes. And we've got a polygon hotspot that pops open a image pop-up. All right, now there are um, posts in the forum to show how do you create an image pop-up using a polygon hotspot. And this is what this particular customer used to do it. All right, so this is what he did. He followed his, uh, followed the instructions and he built this. Um, and then it's also got, you know, as I said, a point hotspot that changes nodes. So you click on a hotspot. But when we change nodes, what we've actually got is a screen tint, a close button and the loader for the image pop-up going on. Hmm, okay, so why? Okay, right, well, let's let's revisit this, shall we? So let's go back to the skin, or let's go to the skin. And again, we've got lots of things here that we can get rid of, don't really need any of those. Probably get rid of the hotspot as well. Um, and all we're really interested in is the image pop-up. Right, okay, so if I click on the image pop-up, um, there it is. Uh, what we can do is right button click, find element usage, and it says, right, so the image pop-up is going to be an action to, to, to set the value of this. And it's going to be the uh, image pop-up control. So we have a look at this. What action is there? Uh, image pop-up control. Here we go, this one, sorry. So when we click on that, um, we've got the action here. Okay. Um, and then obviously there's the image loader, the external image loader itself. This is the, the thing that's actually showing the image. Right, so when we go to this, so it's now drawing us to this. Okay, so this is, this is where we're being drawn to. Um, now, for you that know and don't know, and what the post describes is, if you want to have a polygon hotspot interact with the skin, we use something called hotspot proxy IDs. So, you know, and what the post describes to use is an asterisk, and an asterisk is wildcard. So it works with all IDs, right? So you can have, technically, as many polygons, uh, let's close this and get back to the other node, all right? So what it does is technically allows you to have as many polygons as you want, and you can click them and pop open um, the image pop-up or, or video pop-up or whatever it is you're gonna be popping up, right? Okay. But, and this is, you know, if you know what's going on, this automatically says what the problem is. And it was because of this hotspot proxy. We're using the wildcard and the thing or the key bit of information that was missing, not only does it work with, you know, hot, all hotspot IDs, but it also works with all hotspot IDs, be it point or polygon. So the issue here is when you're clicking the, the point hotspot, you're also triggering this bunch of actions. All right. Now, as I say, with, with the, uh, with the hotspot proxy, just to, just to expand that little bit, bit, bit of information is that it works with an ID. So the actual point hotspot itself. So if we look at this has an ID, it's called poly one. If I click on this point hotspot, it's called point oh one, but the wildcard doesn't matter what this is called. As long as there is an ID, when you mouse over, click, mouse down or mouse up or mouse press, whatever action is in here, you are creating that. So if this had a mouse press for argument's sake, if you were to press on the um, polygon, it would activate the press here. If you click on the polygon, it activates a click here. So that's what's going on. So how do we fix this? Um, I know it's going a little bit off topic, but we wanted to, you know, a quick fix for this is again, in version seven, what's new is that we can have regular expressions in the hotspot proxy ID. So as a quick fix, what we would say is right, all polygons that are going to open up an image, what we're going to do is call this image 01. All right, I can add another polygon if I wish. So let's just come over here and we can call that image 02, all right? Um, just for simplicity, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this uh, uh, file path to open the image. I don't wanna add another one, but we'll just call this pop-up um, number two all right so that's that's the id that's a different id right okay so now what we're going to do is pop back to the skin 
and show how we're going to fix this. So this is obviously working with every single type of hotspot, be it polygon or point, as said. But in version 7, we now support regular expression. So what I can do is go um, hash image and then dot asterisk. So what we're doing is adding the wildcard after the word image. Okay, cool. So with that said, what I'm going to do is save the skin, generate the output. And what that should do now is that these two will pop up the image. Okay. And this one is no longer trying to trigger it. In fact, what we can also do is add yet another polygon hotspot. But as long as I don't change the ID, or I could use, I don't know, the ID for something else, I don't know, like, I don't know, video 01, right? It is not, or it should not, I say should not, will not affect the output here. Because in the skin, we are looking for the ID to start with image. So this can work with, you know, um, you can have polygons now, uh, polygon hotspots now working with image pop-ups, video pop-ups, uh, web pop-ups, and you're not going to conflict. You can use this regular expression to solve your problem. Anyway, that was a little bit off topic, but that was the fix for this particular skin for this particular customer. Okay, right, close. Am I good to carry on or, does, or, or have we got any questions? No, you're good. Good to carry on. I take it there's people here, or I'm just not talking <laughs> I to I think myself. so. I think there's people here. <laughs> just yeah. like, okay then. Right, okay. <laughs> right, so let's uh, move on then to the uh, next project. Oh, we have a question. We were too fast. Oh, go on. So, um, and uh, yeah, Luke has a good question, which I, I was thinking about as well. For the regular expressions, why do you add the dot for in front of the asterisks? Why Be is the dot there? Um... Th because as far as I know, that's the way to do a wildcard. Um, you've got to understand that, you know, I'm not a coder. This is what makes me laugh when people say, oh, you need to be a coder to use Pano 2 VR. Um, um, but I'm not a coder. I'm just, you know, working with working with the uh, the team and, and, and in customers as well. Customers are always, you know, always take me to school um, and you pick up things. And I've just picked it up. It's a dot and then every any ca a character. Um, is the wild card um but i use dot asterisks i'm 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 sort of looking and i think someone uh, you know, well one of the team is saying that it could be you know any number um of a you know so any number so it could be dot something else but i tend to use dot asterisks as the wild card and that works for me and because it works i always use it but i'm sure that, but you know looking at looking at what i'm seeing here it, it, it could because I've, I've just got a message from one of the team. It, it could be something else. You could use dot um, and then any character. But yeah, but I just use dot asterisks and that works. And that's why I use it. Did that answer the question? <laughs> Please. Yes, uh, yes. It didn't answer my question. Which is what I, you're... I've, go on. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so yeah. Okay. I think having... Uh, um, I guess having the dot is to re it, it, it's not for an extension, but for characters. So any kind of letters or numbers, I guess. Um, and I, what I also, I, I, I've used reg regex in uh, as well, and I didn't need the dot, so it still worked. Um, but yeah, I guess it means you can. It, it, it looks for everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> also, it's written in our documentation. <laughs> so I follow our documentation. So if that's wrong, your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we had this discussion a while ago because I think it wasn't in the documentation and then it was. And yeah, yeah. As, what um, I guess the. All right. Is okay. that it? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, uh-huh, we, we got we got a clear, we got a clear answer. Shall <laughs> yeah. I read it from Christoph? That's Go on, it says, read it out. Um, <laughs> the dot means that after image, after in this case, after image, any character uh, can follow. And the, and the asterisk means not just one character, but as many as you want. 
Right. So, yeah. So, if for argument's sake you had, I don't know, image 9999999, then asterisk means it don't care how many nines it's got after it. Anything after the image is just wildcard. Anything. Bang. Job done. So, there you go. I always knew there was a good reason why I used that, but I just never knew it. But there yeah. you go. <laughs> And so, but Luke also has a, a the question that is, which I think of what he's trying to ask is, um, can he use the dot for an extension? So if you had image dot JPEG, then would it be image dot JPEG dot, or is that, if I'm understanding your question right, Luke? I. But I think you could I have the dot after. It. I wouldn't use that in a regular expression anyway, because I'm trying to. I use a regular expression to target multiple elements. Mm -hmm. um so but we got hang on let me let, let me have a look on our web page because we do actually have um uh, you, um thomas is saying that you would need a backslash for that oh okay. so you could you, you could yeah. search for that and you would you would need a backslash okay right before the dot <laughs> <laughs> i think we need to move on <laughs> i'm going to be having nightmares <laughs> of dots and backslashes later on <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! It's yeah. Okay, yeah. so it'd be uh, yeah backslash dot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if anybody's going to VR Oslo, you can talk to the man himself. Really, that's what I'm going to say. Oh, was that a plug? Was that a plug? There was were... that a plug? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, right. So I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Let's let's move <laughs> Thank on. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> Welcome to the hell of regex. Yeah, okay. Moving on then. Right. So that's that project, and that was to do with pop-up images and and whatnot. So, um, right. The next project um, was a map missing. Now this one is sort of manufactured for the webinar and sort of not because I've actually seen people. I mean, I've obviously manufactured it for the or we manufactured it for the webinar, but. It was, it was, uh, I've seen this happen and it's because of probably my own fault um, because I'm always telling people, well, I'll copy and paste and da 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 and copy and paste da 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 and it's, and it's, uh, yeah. And that can lead to problems if you're not wary about what you're doing. So anyway, here's the project. It's a two note tour and it has a map. Click the map, it expands, no map. And what I was after is some sort of light box effect, right? So here we go. And with version seven, what we can have is actions with delays. So let's have a look at the skin. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the skin. And what we're saying is that the map element's not working. So all I'm gonna do is select the map, right button click and find element usage, pop. And we're gonna see exactly where the map's being used. So it's because it was on the, because we're right button clicking actually on the element, it selects elements is in its search criteria. It's looking for map one and we're doing an exact match. All right. Um, I don't think a lot happens. No, it's a very small skin. So there's not a lot happening there. Also, as might help as well when you're developing your own skins, what I did was any elements within the skin that had actions, I just colored them green. You can right button click and assign a color. Or I can delete it or right button click and assign a color and I don't know, but I always tend to put, you know, green or some sort of color to say, right, when I'm looking for something with actions, I know this particular skin's got an action in here. It's the node image, and that's going to be mouse click open next panorama, which is pretty obvious. And here, this button's got um, uh, uh, some actions in there as well. But if you didn't have the colors, what you could do is right button click on the map, find usage. You'd end up popping this box open, and it would say the SVG. When you click on it, it automatically selects the SVG, and it says this SVG has two actions that affect the map, and it's got an action mouse click change element alpha, and the target is the map. Right, but it's got two actions doing exactly the same thing. Okay, so what is going on? Right. Now we did a uh, webinar not so long back where we did expanding um, like call out hotspots. So when you mouse over something, um, you would create a call out. Well, this is very much in the same vein as that. Um, basically what's happening here is rectangle two, let's close this. Rectangle two is being used as a screen tint. All right, so that's rectangle two. So let's go back to this. So what we're saying is on mouse click, all right, change element alpha to one. So we and fade it in over half a second, and there's no delay. So it's as soon as we click that, half a second, the screen tint fades in. 
cool. We have a look at the second action. Mouse click alpha, change element alpha back to zero uh, for rectangle two for the for, for, for the screen tint. But this time round, we've got a delay for a second. So when we click the button, it waits a second and then it will fade back out again. But these actions are, you know, all together. They're on a click. Now again something that uh, that pano 2 vr does we look at you know elements from the top down we look at actions from the top down so we'll execute this action then this one then this one then this one and we'll go down to the bottom all right but it happens really quickly i mean that's you know it will appear that it all happens at once but this is the action or this is the order th things happen but if you look we've got a little asterisk here and what that asterisk is denoting is that this action has what we call an action filter so if i double click this you'll see that there is an active action filter here and when we click this you'll see that the action filter is saying that we can execute this action when the pop-up equals false now the pop-up is a variable in the skin all right um, if I click in all this so I click in the skin you'll see the variable here I could even right button click find element usage and you'll see that where this variable is being used within the skin okay so you can see here that it's a an action mouse click change element alpha um, and it's also being used as an action uh, filter variable condition. All right, so that gives you a bit of a clue of what's going on with that. So what we're saying then is on click, if the variable is set to false, which is its default, it will um, fire this action. Again, what I'm gonna do, add one of my little helpers, all right? Here we go. One of my little helpers, because we've got this variable, it's changing, but I'm not seeing something. So is the is is the is the variable changing? Is the question. So let's go add a helper. Go to variables, add the variable. So this is now showing the contents of that variable. So let's just save and generate the output. Boom. There it is, and you can see that it's set to false. And when I click on the button. It sets it to true. So I know it's nothing to do with the variable not working. Now I knew that anyway, to be honest, because obviously we've got the screen tint and all of this happening. Um, but this is a good confirmation. We can now see that variable value changing with the little helper box. All right, okay, what you might wanna do with the helper box is assign the color orange. And you can say to yourself, anything with orange, I've got to delete before I publish the tour properly or create the final output just as a little bit of tip there. Anyway, moving on. Um, so we know that the variable's working. Okay, and we know that the skin then was built, and how it was built was we'd create an action to show the rectangle, then I would copy and paste, open it up, where it was set to one, I would set it back to zero, I would then say, right, well this hiding it needs to be the last thing, and everything takes a second to happen, so I wanna hide the screen tint after a second when everything's closed, and so that's that. And what you'd need to do is remember to go in and set the variable to true. So why is this happening? Right, as I said, the actions start from the top and work down. When we get to the very bottom, there is this action. And what this action is doing, because on click, the variable is at false, right? As we saw in the in the output. So it goes through all of these actions, blah, 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 blah gets to here and it changes it. This knot is like a, a toggle, yeah? So it toggles it to true, all right? So let's just see that. Oh, let's see that in action. All right, so we click it once. Now, very, very quickly, it would fire all those actions, and then that last action is toggling it to true. Then when we click it again, because it's now true, so when we click it again, it fires all of the actions that will react with true, and then it toggles it back to false so let's go back to the skin so this one then will only work when it's false so it'll open it up after the first click and it's now set the variable to true on click it's going to trigger this action okay so now i know when i was copying and pasting there could be an issue so again if i go to the map find element uh, usage we'll see that it's the two actions within the map button so i don't need to worry about any of these actions what i'm looking at is these two here so click, what's the action? Mouse click, change the uh, the alpha to one, bum, 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 and it's false, so that's gonna happen when it's false. Okay, cool. Go to the next action, have a look at it. Mouse click, change the alpha back to zero, so we're hiding the map. Um, map one, click, and it's, ah, there you go. There's the aggro. That's what's causing the problem. 
all right this should have been true but because building this skin it was a lot of copy and paste copy and paste edit copy and paste edit copy and paste edit this got forgotten this needed to be set to true because what we want to do is or what or what was happening because both of these were triggered with false as we click the button it went through all of these actions and even though this was set to show the map this one was set to sh to hide it again afterwards set its alpha to zero and i said it does start from the top and work down but it does it very r quickly so it appears to happen all at once so what actually happened was it tried to show it then didn't now that we've set the variable correctly so this one to show it is false this one to hide it is now true let's save generate the output have a look and when we click the button whoop, the map fades in when we click it the rectangle had it's a second uh, the the screen tint has a second delay so it comes in straight away and when we click it the rectangle or the screen tint's the last thing to go but we now see the button uh, or the map come in and out all right and that's basically the fault with this but i've seen this quite a few times on support where you know people copy and paste actions building skins rather quickly um and then just forget to either change an action or change a um uh, an action filter or a variable or something like that and you end up with this problem right um that really um takes me to the end of these projects um karen uh, do we have any questions i think i'm going to wrap this up to be honest we've been going for nearly an hour um oh, no. those no are the questions there's this there's the four projects we've gone through i'm um, i'm hoping it's it's shown you the processes and how and how to make your life easier trying to debug your own skins what things you can do color things so if you're going to put helper boxes in i don't know color and red so when you are ready to finish the skin and everything's working you can see the colors in the tree to the stuff to delete before you end up doing your final publishing or whatever and then you know the right button click the menu the find menu find usage all of those things that you know are not overly obvious but they're a good bunch of tools to help you solve your problems and and you know and what i would say is if you've got a skin and you open it up um and you see the triangles and when you try and close it you know if it closes okay do the find find warnings as we did earlier um but if you've done something and try and close the skin and it's got warnings try and find out what they are you would be surprised on support how many skins we get with warnings showing and you just look at the skin and go right okay let's let's solve all these first and then we can really nail down to what's actually wrong so anyway um i hope that you've all learned something um and got something out of this but for me i'm you know I've, I've come to the end and i think you know uh, i think we're done so karen as i say one last time uh there's no questions no questions i'm going to keep asking until so no i'm not <laughs> <laughs> i think it was pretty clear i think so uh, at least at least for me I, and um yeah i hope you picked up a few tips there i know i did so um yeah yeah, I mean, these are always a, a learning, like for like when you do a, a webinar, um, you know, there's even stuff in here that I don't know. And, you know, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll always go back to the team and say, right, well, this is what I'm doing. Is it? They say, oh, you should do this and you should do that. I go, OK, right. OK, didn't know that one. Thanks. You know, and they are there's 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 lots of little things in there that really can help. But yeah, all good. Anyway, I don't want to be babbling on for too long. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we're done. And. I'm going to thank everybody that have joined us for joining and from me until next time, which I do believe is next week. Is that next Wednesday? Next week. Yeah. And yep. remind me, Karen, do you know what it is? Oh, no. Sorry. I've just put you on the spot. <laughs> I? It's, it's, it's all the useful things in the skin. I actually forget what the title is, but it's, it's, it's. Oh, it's... okay. Yeah. This was, this is debugging the skin. I think the next one is all the, we've added a lot of new things into the skin editor. And I think that you are going to show how to use them. Yeah. yeah some, some old, There's some There's a new. description on the website. You yeah. Can... <laughs> but it's, but it's basically next week. It's, it's all, it's all the, the skin features to help you you know align objects and do this oh and do that. thank you anonymous so, practical features yes someone copied and pasted yes <laughs> and Raphael, i'm glad you got you i'm glad you got the audio working uh they said thank you and 
yeah thanks so um yes yeah, all good all right well all right. thank you everyone and from me anyway <laughs> until until next week we'll see until you then and week. karen do you want to <laughs> yeah, say bye. your bit say right That's it. i'm done <laughs> you're done right and i'm going to say not just from me but from the whole team thanks for joining us until next week cheerio bye